we can do for them and how can they implement that so that's the first challenge as far as the machine is concerned as far as the hr is concerned the challenge was related to you know getting those kind of a skills because none of the people in india actually were exposed to those kind of a technologies and the second worry with them was because understanding the language of the machine so that was the biggest issue for uh, every one of them you know, how to understand that what the machine is talking to me and that we then overcome because of the kind of a training program we put in you know that bringing those expert into the picture and training these guys in terms of uh, you know that how to understand the language of a machine and which is very very critical and crucial wonderful thank you so much uh, satya uh, manush made a good point about we do all of this for the betterment of people at the end of the day if we look at our gdp per capita gdp per capita is about 1800 usd right so if we want to get to a reasonable number around 10000 the only way to get that done is via productivity increases what is your take on that does industry 4.0 really better the lives of people uh, or is it more of a threat more of so a challenge so if you look at uh, if you look at the impact of the industry 4.0 in fact uh, i just opened up saying it only impacts about 10% of the industry the big boys when i talk about the big boys in india we especially 90% of the uh, industry is only msme or ancillary industry so we are looking at only 10 percentage impact in the industry 4.0 in india now the question is whether it affects the productivity ideally should not affect because uh, your entire gdp is not constituted by the 10 percentage it is constituted by the 90 percentage even if you look at the employment generation the employment generation is actually constituted by the msme sector than your 10 percentage of big boys <laughs> looking at that definitely the job roles will change and it will not actually affect the productivity the productivity will actually go up the gdp will go up but the alternative job should be created for that we need to train our uh, uh, employees and also our uh, the people who are joining the workforce that's going to be the important challenge under the industry 4.0 Yeah, you could even take this one step forward and say, okay, listen, the way we currently operate with our MSMEs that are de facto not small and medium-sized enterprises, but micro-sized enterprises, this is actually not the way to the future. In the sense that, if we want to really have qualified jobs, we want to have reasonable productivity, we want to have reasonable quality also, which we need in a supply chain perspective. What you talked about, it has to come not only from the big boys, from say a Bajaj, but down to the last guy making. The last screw i think that is one uh, area that uh, is definitely in need of dire reform uh, in the country in fact to put it in a precise manner the challenge of the industry 4.0 is going to be how do we integrate the big boys to the ancillary units or the msme that's going to be the important challenge that's also an opportunity because moment you are going to integrate then the efficiency of your uh, manufacturing and your automation will actually increase the efficiency will increase plus you'll actually have some money to invest in r&d you'll have some money to invest in training uh um manoj let me go back to hr you said listen hr is a very important partner a transformation partner needs to understand the business what is it that hr managers that are operating in factories today need to do to really uh remain or become relevant for a business for a line manager yeah hr is a traditional role in india but is uh, more of a administration or the personal administration nature however you know that uh, though the name has been changed from a uh, administration or the personal department to hr department but it has not really started evolving as in human resource department and when i talk about the human resource department the most important touch point is understanding the human first understanding the nature of job what he is doing and you know that then understanding that what is a kind of a explicit requirement from a particular employees into his position so so that's the most important and that is what i come across that you know that they have to play a kind of a leadership role they have to be into a strategy uh, development uh, side of it when the you know company strategies are ge getting developed because ultimately everything then has to be executed by the people and they have to make their relevance over their understanding that what kind of a people are required to make this strategy successful and that is what is my expectation as far as the hr is concerned going forward uh satya any comments from your side uh if you look at the next challenge that's going to be the for the hr is going to be on the change management people are for, for example people who are in the traditional jobs as to move to a new areas of job change management is not easy 
and uh, you know, somebody who was working uh, traditionally in 10 years in one particular forte now has to move to a different area where thinking is involved is going to be a big challenge. Now how the HR is going to kind of transition himself from the HR professional to the change management professional is going to be the big challenge and uh, we all know what has happened in the last few uh, years, a few two years before the lot of people are losing jobs now. Some of the prominent software companies have laid off people. Now, laying off is not easy and HR is involved primarily in that to ensure that they actually look at how they can be put for the alternative jobs. It's not about HR today, what the uh, big, big organization look at or any organization looks at as HR is as only an admin person. They should be a business partner, a business partner in the decision making. And uh, the orientation should be for the HR should also be given on the latest technology. Now, the greatest challenge for the HR professional is upgrading about the latest technology. Second, Involve, involving themselves in the change management. Only when they understand the latest technology, then they can effectively involve in the change management. So industry 4.0, even before it comes to India, the more orientation has to be given for the HR professionals, only then they will know what are the new skill set that is required. So in fact, uh, the most important thing to be, uh, for the HR is they should be a partner in nation building. Because India as such is about 60% of the population and all the, pop the population is moving towards employment, uh, 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 seeking employment, then ideally the role of the HR is there where they should involve with the government to shape the policies with respect to skill and uh, education. So that's my uh, uh, push. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, basically what uh, we typically see is there is an opportunity in terms of uh, driving continuous learning within an organization as everything changes not only HR has to upgrade themselves but so do employees and also making sure that I have an opportunity to enable employees that I don't want to be part of my company anymore find a job outside so I need to look at that particular perspective I think in on concrete terms uh, there is a lack of engagement in terms of dual education Right, basically the, uh, the partnering with institutes, and I'm not talking only about engineers, I'm talking about real vocational training uh, that is absolutely important where HR should play a major role, which in my opinion is not happening in India to the uh, tune that uh, it should. We have some companies that do very, very well. If you look at Bharat Forge, for example, the kind of training programs that they have in their company, it's outstanding. If you look at Bosch, outstanding. But how do I scale these kind of processes? I think that's something. And that leads to, for me, a third point, and that's the point of cooperation. Right? We don't cooperate between companies. We don't cooperate within companies. Now, that kind of behavior in an environment where the whole enterprise is going to be connected from the supply chain to logistics, to production, to sales and operations uh, uh, is just not going to cut it. So I think those are some of the areas that really need to be uh, dramatically uh, and on a war footing addressed by uh, HR, in addition to the points that you mentioned. Just a, a one more point. We talked about, or you made this comment about India being ready for Industry 4.0. Now, unfortunately, we've just done a study <laughs> uh, where we compared the BRICS nations with Japan, with Germany, with uh, the US and Korea. And while China is a very, very credible and uh, uh, capable competitor, the rest of the BRICS nations is near, nowhere. Right? Yes, uh, we may at some point have cable all over the place, but what we need is automation. Our automation is two per thousand employees, which is just a fraction of what's happening in China. We are not buying robots. The Chinese are buying the robots. Uh, if we look at even our engineers, the kind of engineers that we get are nowhere close to what we need in terms of capability, and the result is many of them don't find jobs. Uh, if we look at the intent of companies to really invest in new technologies. What we see is, at least over the last two years, uh, Indian companies have improved profits, but not reinvested in technology, not reinvested in CapEx. And the Chinese have lost profitability, but have invested in CapEx and in R&D. So, it, I mean, if you look at it just from sort of a very limited point of view, you could argue we're living off the present and they are building the future. So um, how prepared are we for Industry 4.0? Do we have to take this seriously? Or can we simply say, well, listen, I've made these components. I've worked off low labor cost. I'll just continue. It doesn't really matter.
so uh, according to me are we ready uh, yes uh, we should be ready with the process on but uh, the capability building should be on a sustainable manner for example if you look at china the what you told is absolutely right uh, china now invest on the future whereas india is now looking uh, has a knowledge of the past and now looking at the present so they don't actually look at the future when this is a kind of a challenge one opportunity what india today has is the market any person who actually comes out of the product cannot exclude india from the market perspective because at the one sixth of the global population is here and all the decision of the other global companies has to be inclusive of india because ultimately the consumption is very very important so looking at that to make industry 4.0 a reality also india should be inclusive part of any country's decision now when that is a kind of an agenda uh, that is going across and china doing it on a fast track basis is very very important because the china chinese population is aging population they don't have a labor force going forward but whereas in india we have a labor force that's fair design thinking is very very important and investment investing on research and development is very very important are we doing that is the biggest question mark to put it in a very simple way i hope everybody will agree if you look at the budget of the government hardly 2% goes for the education sector and there is no spend on the r&d at all we talk about skills on the other day uh, the minister for hrd was there i questioned him what do you talk about the skill are you talking about the skill of the past or are you talking about the present or the future no they are clueless as to what a skill is all about skill is not just about carpentering skill is not about just you know your uh, saloons it's about more than that the design thinking is very very important we need to have the maturity to kind of understand what is the future of the skills and implement that skills immediately that's where the role of the education institution the practice of uh, capturing the 14 years to 19 years very very important from the vocational training perspective so 14 we we look at a lot of global uh, consulting firms have a practice for 14 to 19 years uh, age kids why because that's where the entire skills can be imbibed the interest can be created so that's where immediate requirement for skilling is important definitely we are losing out are we creating an ecosystem for industry 4.0 the ecosystem whether the india indian government creates or not it is already created by the mnc companies now that is a kind of an agenda going across i think we need to uh, take up this challenge as a hr community we need to get united to make the shape the country very important i always stress about the country because ultimately whatever we do is contribute towards the country and self interest is leading to national interest so that is where the hr has to put across as a pointers to the government actually and this industry 4.0 as uh, he told that uh, we should be ready there is nothing uh, called we should be ready because that is a necessity you know if we wanted to be competitive and uh, we have to be competitive in india as i told that it is the largest market available across the world in terms of the consumption and when it is going to explode for any kind of a product i think that uh, at that point of a time there is no other choice but to have the highest level of productivity and the quality associated with it and that can only happen if you know that uh, we are ready and we actually should have been ready by this time so there is so that's why it is important that this thought process now has to go go into the policy making of the country and whereby you know that it is a responsibility of even the industries which are here and the fraternity which is available here to make those kind of a proposals to the government and also to the institutions i was just uh, listening into one of the university presentation and because they are making the engineering education more relevant for what is required today and that is what is the need rather than looking into the still that whatever whatever are the conventional way of uh, tra training and the education which was there yeah i think it's a fair point we definitely have a role of mncs but that role is the same for brazil it's the same for russia the question in my mind is simply if we say that we are sort of the it capital of the world and we have a reasonable production in automotive in pharma in other areas uh, i think it should also be an opportunity to leverage these two complementary skills and actually create that ecosystem it requires government support and as uh, as far as i can see uh, we have to be very careful uh, to differentiate between intent and achievement right i think in this time and day it's not enough to come up with schemes but you tell me how you're going to measure your progress and you tell me what you have achieved on the way now you may not achieve 100% but i think just to make the announcement we will do x we will do y we will do z uh, it's just not going to be sufficient 
No, but I think that's uh, that's it from my side. Unless anybody has, if you have a, another comment. Uh, you? Just find a point. So for example, uh, both are working. I think. Uh, yeah. So I was just uh, interacting about this Industry 4.0 for uh, places like Tirupur, uh, Coimbatore, Namakkal, and things like that. How it will have an impact from the uh, discussion sake we had a uh, deliberation there. Now if you look at the, if you look at in Tamil Nadu, especially from the Tamil Nadu perspective, most of the HRs are from Tamil Nadu. Out of 32 districts in Tamil Nadu, 18 districts are industry districts. Tamil Nadu is never a backward, a backward state. It's always an industry-oriented uh, state. And when the 18 uh, districts are industry-oriented, the industry 4.0 awareness need to be brought there, first thing. Second, India as a government taking policy at the central level and implementing the state level is very difficult. It's a democratic country where cooperative federalism is a dream that should happen over a period of time. And competitive federalism should come in the development process, which is not happening in our... So cooperative federalism should come in the implementation of policy, and competitive federalism should come from the development aspect, which is not happening in the country. Now, what is the solution for Industry 4.0? From the micro perspective is, the industry clusters has to be integrated in the Industry 4.0. At the end of the day, if you look at the industry cluster, Tirupur, textile, garments, and uh, if you look at Namakkal, transport hub, logistics is there. And if you look at Karur, again at textile, Coimbatore, you have a lot of uh, manufacturing companies, cotton yarn, uh, spinning mills and things like that, tools, and all those things are there. Then ideally, the industry cluster approach has to be taken by the country while actually bringing awareness about Industry 4.0. And if you look at Chennai as such, all the units, for example, if you go to Sri Budur, for a big manufacturing, car manufacturing unit, there are hundreds of ancillary units. Now the industry 4.0 is quietly going to have an impact on the hundreds of ancillary units, both the MNC ancillary units as well as the Indian promoted ancillary units. Again, this industry 4.0 to catch up with the trend, I would say there's nothing called catching up, it will automatically happen. While it happens, do we have the skill is the biggest question mark. When we, when we need to promote the skill, the role of the HR actually squarely comes there. And this is understanding that uh, our profession as an HR, we need to understand and then take it forward. This is my point. I think that's a fair point. And from my side, quite frankly, what I feel needs to happen is uh, Indian companies need to really step up. They need to invest in R&D, need to invest in these processes. Yes, it's nice if the MNCs do this, but if you want taxes and you want long-term employment, your own companies need to be successful. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Right? That's that's a, a final comment from my side. My side, Manoj, anything? Yeah. Okay, fine. So then I'd like to open it up to questions. Any questions from the audience? Just one over here, please. Do we have a, there's a microphone. I just wanted to raise a question from the education perspective. I think in the morning, Mr. Annamala, you spoke about uh, the transformation phase that we have gone through in implementing the automation where he talked about PLC. I just wanted to tell you, today we are in 2017. In India today, even we do not have a proper curriculum of PLC, right? It is left to the discretion of the individual institution, whether to tie up with Siemens or Schneider or LNT or you know Mitsubishi, right? And we are producing people. Now we are talking about industry 4.0. There are industries split into two uh, you know, sides of the coin. One side of the coin is Western industries from Western origin. Then the other side of the coin is industries from the Eastern origin. When I say Western origin, the Europeans and North Americans, they are talking about industry 4.0. On the other side, the industries coming from uh, Japan and uh, you know, Korean base, they are talking about E2 echo changes. That is exactly the other version of industry 4.0. Now you tell me, we are also as good as a production factory, right? I don't mind using this word. We are also producing the human talent to feed to all these people who are sitting here, right? So how are you expecting us to cope up with